Wow! Look at the variety of trees, creepers, shrubs and orchids. I never realized so many of them even existed on this planet. Our planet has an amazing variety of flora and fauna. Even if you were to consider just the plant kingdom, the sheer number of species available would be overwhelming. Scientists and enthusiasts have always tried to organize this vast domain of information into a structured body of knowledge. It is an ongoing effort. In this lesson, you will learn about the classification of the plant kingdom. At the end of this lesson, you will be able to explain the classification of the plant kingdom and identify the characteristics of each subclassification. Members of the plant kingdom are called plantae. They are set apart from other organisms by two unique characteristics. They are all eukaryotes and they use chlorophyll for photosynthesis to make their own food. Photosynthesis is the process by which plants use energy from the sun to convert water and carbon dioxide into sugar and release oxygen into the atmosphere. This is a plant tissue. As you can see, plants are multicellular and have cell walls. The fascinating world of plants or plantae is divided into two sub-kingdoms. These sub-kingdoms are further divided into five distinct classes. This classification is based on specific criteria. These criteria evolve from answers to four main questions. 1. Does the plant have distinct parts like stem, roots and leaves? 2. Do these parts have tissues that transport food and water? 3. Does the plant bear naked seeds? 4. Are these seeds enclosed in fruits? Now, let's look at this classification in detail. In 1883, Eichler classified the plant kingdom into two sub-kingdoms, Cryptogamy and Phanerogamy. The sub-kingdom Cryptogamy includes plants with hidden reproductive organs. These plants do not bear flowers or seeds. Cryptogamy are further divided into three groups. Thallophyta, Bryophyta, and Pteridophyta. Thallophyta are the simplest of plants that do not have a well differentiated body design. They are mostly aquatic. Do you see something floating in that glass of water? That's algae. As you can see, algae do not have leaves, stems or roots. Algae can be single as well as multi-celled organisms. They are autotrophic in nutrition. Algae belong to the group Thallophyta. 
Spirogyra, Eulothrix, Cladophora, and Cara are all examples of algae that are included in Thallophyta. Let's move on to the next group. Look at this thin carpet of vegetation on the rock. Do you know what it is called? It's moss. You may have noticed moss on walls, rocks and barks of trees. Now, look at it closely. You will find that it resembles a plant. That is, it displays a stem and leafy structure. Moss or Fanaria belongs to the group Bryophyta. Bryophytes are often called amphibians of the plant kingdom as they require both aquatic and terrestrial conditions for the completion of their life cycle. Their body is differentiated to form stem and leaf-like structures, but not true leaves and roots. Vascular tissues, which are special tissues for the transportation of nutrients and water, are also absent in bryophytes. Bryophytes include Rickia and Marcantia. As you can see, this plant has well-formed leaves. What do you think it is? A thallophyte or a bryophyte? Well, actually, it belongs to neither of the two groups. This plant is a fern and it belongs to the third group under cryptogamy. This third group is known as pteridophyta. Horse tails and marsilia are also pteridophytes. Unlike thallophytes and bryophytes, the plant body of pteridophytes is differentiated into stem, leaves and roots. They also have vascular tissues to conduct water and food to the different parts of the plant. Like thallophytes and bryophytes, these plants also have naked embryos in the form of spores underneath the leaf. What's that? A ripe tomato? Tomatoes have a lot of seeds inside them. Seeds are the result of the reproductive process. This makes the tomato a phanerogam. All plants that develop seeds and have well-formed stem, leaves and roots belong to the sub-kingdom Phanerogamae. Phanerogams contain embryo along with stored food that helps the embryo to germinate. Based on whether the seeds are naked or enclosed in fruits, phanerogams are further classified into gymnosperms and angiosperms. Here are some nice green gymnosperms. Wondering what I'm talking about? These deodors. They must be really very old, but they look so fresh and young. But why shouldn't they? They are evergreen pines. Pinus, cycus, and other coniferous trees 
are also gymnosperms. Gymnosperms get their name from two Greek words. Gymno meaning naked and sperma meaning seed. As you can guess from the name, gymnosperms bear naked seeds and are usually perineal and woody. The opposite of gymno in Greek is angio, meaning covered. Hence the word angiosperm means covered seed. And that brings us to the second class of phanerogams. Angiosperms are highly evolved plants with flowers, fruits and seeds. They are also called flowering plants. Let's look at angiosperms in a little more detail. The flowers in angiosperms develop into fruits with seeds in them. Embryos in these seeds have seed leaves called cotyledons. These cotyledons supply food to the growing embryos when the seeds germinate. Angiosperms are divided into two groups based on the number of cotyledons they have. Plants with seeds having a single cotyledon are called monocots and those having two cotyledons are called dicots. Let's look at some other differences between monocots and dicots. We will use a corn seed as an example of monocot and a bean as a dicot. Examining the parts of the corn seed and the corn plants, you can see that the corn seed is a single whole seed. On the other hand, the bean can be split into two parts. That's because the corn seed is a monocot and the bean is a dicot. The manner in which they grow and spread their roots is also very different. In fact, as you can see, the leaves of the monocot and dicot plants differ from each other as well.